Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to stage two. This afternoon, we are going to be talking about the life cycle of, um, of API. So API lifecycle management. We have a series of four speakers for you this afternoon who we are excited about. Our first one is Anna Doherty, who you will hear from shortly. But before that, I will introduce myself again. I'm Shirley Torho, my pronouns are she, her. And I'm the founder of Innovate Access Consulting. We deal in public health systems and ensuring that you know data systems can be integrated in ways that allow public and private sectors to communicate. And so again, thank you for being here. We are excited to have our speakers. The first one is Anna Doherty, who we will be bringing to the stage shortly. Anna is the product marketing manager at Stoplight. And so Anna, welcome and thank you for being here. Thanks for having me so much. I, I'm thrilled to be here. Um, so my my talk is very short here, but um, I'm really excited to be opening up this uh, session of uh, API lifecycle management because the topic that I'm presenting on is about how to uh, bring lifecycle management left. And we'll, I'll explain a little bit about what that means in a second. Uh, but a little bit about me. I am the product marketing manager at Stoplight. And Stoplight is a software as a service platform that enables API design, governance, and documentation. Uh, we're, I've been there a few months now, but we're, we're a growing company and we're really excited to be in this space. So let's start with the thesis here. You've probably heard uh, both from people at this very conference and in thought leadership across the industry that you need to start treating APIs as a product. This is not a new concept. It's starting to really gain steam. And in healthcare, insurance, finance, you're all probably hearing about um, how you need to expose your internal business um, value to external opportunities. Um, so in order to do that, API can become a product for which to deliver your business value. And so uh, you hear that a lot. Um, API is a product. What does that really mean? And how can you practically uh, follow the product design life cycle um, as an API developer. So I wanted to take a moment to sort of establish the connection between the ideas of product design and API design. So product design is an understood concept. Uh, we have leaders in this space, Envision, Figma, very large products that are delivering design uh, to product space. And what does that deliver for the organizations that use a design first mentality for product design. Um, higher quality products, they have better usability, um, they deliver operational efficiency. So your employee productivity goes up, your time to market goes down. Um, so that's very efficient. It's more profitable. You're delivering revenues, revenue and cost savings. And you're also improving your market position. When you design a product before uh, developing it, you're ensuring not only that it's a high quality product, but that it meets the business goals and uh, helps uh, your, the users actually want to use it. So when you have a high design maturity in your organization, you're more likely to see cost savings, revenue gains, and market position improvements. Now let's take that and apply that very same idea to API design. Uh, when you think about it, it just makes sense, right? API design, product design, all right, I get that. Why does it matter that uh, we say, let's treat your API as a product, but we don't have a practical approach to take to actually deliver APIs as a product? And it comes with the life cycle that currently exists and the workflows that exist within that life cycle for most organizations. Now, I will say there are some very mature API organizations out there who don't necessarily have this problem, but for a majority of the people we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis, and many people in industries like healthcare, finance, and insurance, they need help understanding how to shift that workflow left toward a more design-first approach. And what's wrong with the workflow today? 
Um, we see that the most uh, prevalent problem is a disconnected workflow. So not one workflow for designing an API or developing an API, it exists in several parts. Um, so the first is uh, practicing it, simply making it first. Code first is what you'll hear very often. Governance is a whole other workflow where someone will say, ah, 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 you didn't follow the rule set I put out for you, or we determined the rules but changed the rules on you halfway through. Or three, the documentation process. So it, it lives outside of the ecosystem. You can't develop an API and try to provide it to people who want to use it without some sort of accurate documentation. And a lot of times it'll fall out of date. It'll be useless. So if they exist separately, then these people are working uh, all over the place and it, it uh, really contributes to a lack of maturity at your program. So let's take a look deeper into that practice part. And the practice part is where um, you'll discover you need an API, you'll create it, go code first, you'll make it, uh, you'll, you'll follow the end use case to its, its final product, and you'll deprecate it when it's no longer useful to you. Um, this is what we see a lot of times at a lot of organizations where they, they know they need it and they know they can make it fast. Um, making it fast isn't the problem for a lot of places, but making it a quality API that meets the business needs, this is where we find the most opportunity. Now let's take a step back and think about it from a product perspective. If you were to synonymize APIs with a product, well, how are products typically created? Doesn't look like this. It looks like this. First, there is the discovery, but the discovery isn't just, I need an API or I need a product. The discovery is, I need a product. Do I have the capabilities already? Have I created something that already provides the benefit that I am looking for? And would it be duplicate effort uh, across my organization if I started this project? Is there, are there synergies and are there uh, abilities for us to combine workflows in order to create a better product? Okay, once that's dis that discovery has been, it has been uh, perfected, then you move on to a design phase. Um, you want to design to the end user. What are their hurts? What are their pain points? Um, what does the user experience look like? Will it be the thing that they need to use? Will they like using it? Will it be adopted? You know, adoption is a huge, huge problem for a lot of organizations. They put something into the world and it's not picked up. And then testing to make sure that what they've theorized as being the thing that their user needs, they actually validate. And then they build it. Imagine four steps before you're even building the thing that you want to put out into the world and then measuring the results. So if you think about how APIs currently exist, there's a whole lot of steps in that middle if we wanted to take a design first approach to deliver a better quality, more mature API program. So why is product design so important to think about um, this way? It's because it is it empathizes with your customer. It puts your customer first. And in this case, if you think about APIs as a product, it puts your end user first. Uh, APIs are used by people. Um, of course, they interface with other uh, pieces of technology, but they are meant to connect uh, business value to other people who can use that business value. Okay, now that we know, okay, what does an ideal product lifecycle look like and how can we sort of mirror that with an API design lifecycle? This is how you can change your workflow at your organization to more match a product design workflow. Let's start with connecting the API lifecycle. Instead of different teams operating in different places, instead of your developers and engineers operating apart from your governance uh, board or no governance at all, no, uh, no standards established or consistency established, um, it should work in tandem. And then at the same time, your documentation should be a part of the entire workflow. It should be such a crucial element to ensure usability and adoption. That's never out of date. It should not be an afterthought. It should be a concurrent thought. So now let's see what that could look like in process. Um, if you remember what it used to look like, there was the yellow create and iterate. Well, now in the, set, in the center, we have a more product design forward approach to APIs, designing, 
then developing, then releasing and monitoring. So uh, making sure that you take the time to uh, become customer first and design your API before rushing into development. Why? Why would you do this? By designing an API, making sure it meets the business value, the end user's needs, you get collaborative feedback on your, your design. It saves time in the implementation process because you're not developing something that is not useful. It saves money because if you've done your discovery correctly, you know that a, an API team is already working on that. Wow, we can combine efforts. And it saves stress because you know that when you produce the results at the end, it's closer to what your finished product should look like instead of crossing your fingers and hoping. So here's some more practical understanding of how you can approach some of these middle steps. So we start with API design. What does this mean? It means aligning the business needs with the success criteria for your API. In the discovery process here, you will determine what you need to produce. You will determine how, if anything already exists, and you will determine what your business needs are. And then now you can create a charter between the business side and the, the engineering and API architects who will agree on what they need to produce as a result. This helps create alignment between business and, and engineering and product. Uh, then you will determine your design spec, uh, spec and you will determine, well, do I want to design this in open API? Uh, what, what do I want to follow? You will uh, speak your customer's language. And what we mean by that is um, don't just uh, assume that they will use certain calls. Uh, really think about the use cases that could be at a whole what language they're speaking, not just um, certain calls that meet certain actions. And then um, get API consumer feedback from a pilot and a prototype. So actually spin up a mock of what this could look like and, and pilot it with your uh, potential end users. Get their feedback. Uh, perform style checks throughout the whole time. So this comes into that idea of governance, but sort of rolling it into the workflow so it's not a, a workflow that exists separately. It works as part of the entire workflow and get review and approval, part of the governance process as part of your design process. I know all of this sounds so theoretical, like how can I do all this? Well, uh, Stoplight is actually a platform that allows for all of this to happen in synchronicity. Now you can move on to developing. And what's nice about uh, designing first is now your development cycle is faster because you can bring your back end and your front end to the mock if you have a mock server and they can start developing at the same time in, in parallel. That's what we talk about when we say connected workflow, you're connecting them together with uh, the mock experience. So they know what they're designing against or developing against. Also the reusability of code samples that have been approved by organization speeds up development time. You also can get developer feedback and user feedback during this, this part of the life cycle as well. And you can pass all of your risk and compliance and security reviews because you already had governance as part of your workflow. And utilizing version control helps everybody stay organized, helps everybody understand what version you are releasing, and you can integrate documentation all at the same time. Now it's time for release. That, this is the fun part, right? This is when your, your API actually gets to the people who need to use it. Um, this is where you can deploy it, but also that documentation you've kept up to date the entire time is now available for everyone to use. Um, and it's up to date and it's delightful and it's, it's easy to understand and it was part of your workflow. Then you can monitor success. And because you took the time at the beginning to um, determine your success criteria, that means at the end, you know that you are coming out with an API that actually will work and you can validate that it is working and adoption can happen. Okay, so let's take a moment to go through the entire API design workflow. Um, new discovery, you just you determine your business case, you perform a redund redundancy check to make sure that you're not duplicating efforts or that two people are not working on the same project that could combine efforts. And then you set your, your API standards for governance to make sure that throughout the entire connected process, they're being followed by automatic style checks and validations. 
Um, then design, develop, release, and monitor. This follows a, a more mature product design thinking when it comes to APIs. Okay, so we wanted to provide something that was a little bit more concrete um, that uh, we uh, want you to be able to take away from this to help you really identify at your organization, whether you have a mature or immature program, uh, what you can start doing to help shift left into a design first um, uh, mentality. So we uh, have sort of arranged this so that um, if you are a small or new API program, if you have a small business and you're just thinking about designing first for your APIs, what are some things that can help you get started? Um, and so we think that the first thing you should start with is uh, really taking a look at your workflow tooling, your instrumentation, your workflows and processes, and identifying gaps. So when we said uh, in the workflow, you should be able to have a spin up, spin up a mock server so that your developers, both front end and back end, can meet in the middle. Do you have mock servers as part of your API workflow? If not, what tooling do you need to plug in that gap? And then for another, for a small uh, business or new organization who wants to go API first, um, just simply having design first education will help. Um, just simply uh, exposing your development and engineering teams and your business teams to the ideas can help spur the concept within your organization. So if they don't know what they don't know, and they don't, if they don't know that product design is such a mature way of thinking about this uh, sort of API lifecycle, then education can help. And then thirdly, uh, especially at a small program, uh, API champions are your, your go-to. They're the ones who are going to really help spur this throughout your organization. And when you have champions, they are committed to this kind of process, and they're the ones who are going to make it uh, proliferate throughout your organization. Now, if you're a medium or a large size business uh, with a more mature API program, then that's where uh, the governance uh, conversation can really come in because this is where you'll see the best opportunity to get buy-in both from your developers and the, the business side of the house. They can see uh, consistency, they can see better quality, and they can see um, better standards that their your APIs can follow. So as you start adding more APIs to your program, as you start uh, exposing them to outside of your organization, you know that they're following the uh, standards of excellence that you've set forth and everybody agrees upon them. So this is just a nice little checklist to, to really reframe as you, as you take this idea back to your organization. And here's what we kind of want to leave you with as a matter of, um, you know, what should you do to um, really shift left? You need to connect your APIs to a product mindset. So products have design because they want to be higher quality. They want to meet the user's needs and they want to be more efficient. API should follow the same way. You need to connect with your customers. They're the people who are actually using your APIs. Now, when we say customers, it's not always external customers, not always uh, external users. A lot of times your APIs are internal, internal use. And so they're still the people using your product and they're still the people you need to consult with to make sure that it, it matches their needs. And then you need to connect your workflows. Like we said, APIs in practice, API governance and API documentation should all live in one workflow. And you need to connect your teams uh, the worst thing you can do is have lots of teams working on the same thing or working on disparate things that don't connect together. Um, so we wanted to sort of say, don't just take our word for it. Um, one of our one of our customers, uh, Calendly, they were so gracious to give us a, um, a case study about how they take a design first approach. And what does it do for them? It gives them higher quality implementation provides consistency, it provides governance and documentation that's always uh, up to date and delightful for their users. And if you've ever used Calendly, you know that they are doing it right. It's a great product. I, I use it all the time. We use it at Stoplight. Um, so it, it they know what they're doing and they're taking a design first approach. I will also say I just had a really great conversation with an insurance company called WeFox. Uh, they are giving us a case study as well. And they've been able to cut down their delivery time by 60%, just shifting their processes left into a design first approach. 
So don't just take our word for it. This works. It's, it works for our customers and it, and it works for really thinking about life cycle from a design first approach. We want to leave you with uh, changing the workflow. Don't just let your APIs make contact. They're not just technology, right? They're, they're products that exist to serve your needs, both from the business level and a user experience level. So use them to create connections with people. Um, so I thank you so much for the opportunity to talk to you about Design First. Um, he, just a little bit more about Stoplight. Uh, we're based in Austin, Texas. We have a complete API design platform that integrates with your with your workflows. Likely, just talk to bring everything together to enable stakeholders to be collaborative, productive, and effective as we create API designs. So I, I really want to <laughs> show you how we think about things in this way. Um, from an organizational and an individual level. Like I said, this is one, one workflow. You should be able to collaborate, govern, design, test, mock, all within one place. And that's what Stoplight enables. So thank you so much. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you about a design first. Thank you so much, Anna, for that enlightening presentation. Um, I really appreciate it all the visuals and the connections that you made for us. And so a few questions for you. The first one is, how do you know the maturity level that your API program has reached? Good question. Um, so we take a couple of different uh, measurements uh, when we think about API maturity level. The first one is uh, company size. So typically it's about the size of your API design uh, team or teams. If you have just a few engineers or developers um, and and you're not following an api design progress or process then you would be considered a small uh, or ma mat immature program if you start adding more api team members um, if you say have you know 10 to 50 developers and engineers perhaps you have a solutions architect on your team that's the medium size once you get above that 50 engineers level, you're heading toward 100, maybe you've got a couple different engineering teams that work on APIs, uh, maybe a, diff a few different um, architects, and maybe even a board that determines governance and standardization across your program, that's a very mature program. So th that size, size category is a big one. And then also uh, just the ability to um, show your processes in action even a small company can have a mature program because they have a tight process. Great. Thank you so much, Anna. My next question for you is, um, I guess what recommendations can you make to ensure that all of the various stakeholders or teams involved across the life cycle of the API are communicating and collaborate, collaborating in the ways that are most efficient to the process? Sure. Uh, this is a great question because it's one of the things we talk about a lot at Stoplight. Um, we have found that the people in charge of design sometimes even just keep their, their ideas in Google Docs. And we found that that disconnects you from your teams and your, your workflow. So we recommend either using uh, a tool like Stoplight or something that connects you to your teams to collaborate in real time. Um, Google Docs does have real-time feature, but it, it really falls out of the API lifecycle. So you need something that plugs into your lifecycle management tooling, something that plugs into your process and allows you to real-time collaborate. So whether that's in the API spec itself, being able to comment or uh, being able to talk at the same time in, in a design. Great. We have one more minute. And so I'd like to ask this question. Um, so our audience member said, you know, how do you suggest version and deprecation to be managed? Uh, great question. So version control should be part of your process. And we um, consider that at, at the release stage, but also version control for uh, your design so that you can collaborate and give feedback at that time. Um, we have opportunities to do both a Git version control and a Gitless version. Um, so you know, whatever works for you and your team, just make the, the de conscious decision to choose the tooling that works for you and your team. As for deprecation, this, this idea of deprecating an API is interesting to me because I think we are missing opportunities by thinking of deprecation as part of the life cycle. Um, I think we should think of deprecation as a possibility for the end of the life of an API, but an API, it has the op 
opportunity if it's part of a larger program to serve more needs. So really before you decide to deprecate, before you decide to throw it out, think about ways you can integrate the, the business value driven from your API into other uh, solutions at your organization. So I'd say managing deprecation is, is a delicate idea and you should really consider it uh, as part of a full program instead of just at an individual API level. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, you know, you, you've definitely taught us a lot um, and we're grateful for your presence here today. Um, I will say when you have a moment, please definitely check out the chat. There were a couple of other questions there as well, but thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.